Welcome to New Mexico! Starting out this three-part travel series at Carlsbad Caverns. And then tomorrow we'll adventure off into White Sands National Park and eat some food in Las Cruces. And the day after that, we're gonna be trying to climb the highest peak in Texas, Guadalupe Peak. But first, let's adventure way down deep into the earth, 750 feet below the surface, a total of about three miles worth of total trail. <laughs> Future Stacy here. Apparently my mic wasn't working, so I'm gonna try to voice over what I was trying to tell you here. So you can take the elevator down from the visitor center straight to the big room, but what we're gonna do is take the natural entrance into the cave. We're gonna go all the way down, walking through the entire trail until we get down to the big room. Now the big room is kind of its own separate trail. I wanna say it's like another hour's worth of walking. Um, but if you don't want to go through that trail, you can always just take the elevator right back up to the visitor center. Before you get to the opening of the cave, there is an amphitheater and it says that the entrance of the cave hosts Brazilian free-tailed bats. The cave ceiling works like a nursery, so the 90 degree heat in the summer, like an incubator, and then at sundown, hundreds of thousands of Brazilian free-tailed bats fly through the exit and you can sit in the amphitheater and watch them. Oh, they have like a gated door. The ranger at the cave entrance said we would take a trek about two and a half miles down into this cave before we would reach the point where we could take the elevator back up. He also told us to kind of keep our voices down in the cave because down here, our voices are gonna carry about half a mile. Now down in the cave, you can see just a glimmer of sunlight and that's the entrance way up there where we started. After you get through kind of the first opening and the area where the bats stay, you get into essentially just a dark zone. Now, the National Park Service has put lighting in here so that you can see where you're going, but without the lighting, it would be virtually pitch black. So because this is federal property, you do still need to wear your masks inside the cave. You do not have to wear them when you're outdoors outside the cave, but then if you're gonna be you know, back in the main building or the recreation center, you do have to wear them. I think one of the first plaques that we read stated this cave was initially discovered maybe in the late 1800, but that people have been coming down here for tours for roughly like a hundred years, which kind of just blew our minds. I think it just sunk in that people have been coming down here for about a hundred years and that's just kind of crazy to think about. There was a ranger that was telling the people in front of us that they ended up installing the elevator in here sometime in the 30s and that before that they had more like a bucket. <laughs> He said it only went down about 150 feet, but of course, you know, you have to imagine that you're sitting in a bucket and it's swaying 150 feet or not, I think I would be terrified. The temperature in the cave stays relatively consistent throughout the year and it'll hover around 59 degrees Fahrenheit. You may not know this about me, but I am absolutely terrified of heights. Going down in this cave, it's so massive. And then you could look over the rail and it's just like an infinite black hole. And I know you say, but Stacy, how do you get on roller coasters? But that's because the roller coaster shoots you and up and down really fast. And you don't have time to think about how high you are. It's not like I'm hanging out up there, you know, sitting down and having a sandwich. So it says the last official exploration of Carlsbad Caverns measured about 31 miles of passages. There are still so many unexplored areas though, so it may be even longer. 
uh, currently at 357,480 square feet. The big room is the 22nd largest cave chamber in the world. Okay, so we've been walking maybe about, what do you think, an hour? We've been walking probably about an hour. So we have now reached the underground rest area. This is where you'll go to the restrooms. You can get some water or a light snack. This is also where you're gonna find the elevators to go back up. She was just telling us that probably about 30 years ago, they used to actually have hot foods down here. You could sit and have a meal, but because of the frying and stuff that they were having to do, it was causing the ceiling to have a black soot on it. So they kind of turned it in, into, um, like cold stuff only. So that's why you'll see here just like drinks, candy bars, chips, and then a couple of prepackaged cold things like a sandwich or a salad. And then she said they moved all of the hot foods in the dining room upstairs. Now you can either stop your tour here and then take the elevator up and be done. Or if you wanted to, you can continue on through the route, uh, which should be like another hour to an hour and a half walk if you want to do it. If you have mobility difficulties, this would be the area if you could ride the elevator down and you would be able to pretty well tour this area as well as most of the big room. If you have mobility difficulties, you wouldn't be able to come through the natural entrance because there's stairs and the incline is not feasible for wheelchairs, strollers and walkers and stuff like that. So I would recommend taking the elevators down here to this kind of rest area and then just checking out maybe the big room. So I think at this point we just went to the restroom, we topped up a bottle of water and we're going to try to continue as much of the trail as we can um, and then after that we'll get up on the elevator. The big room is about the same size as six football fields. Caves like Carlsbad Caverns take millions and millions of years to form and more water droplets than we could probably ever count. Okay, we are squeezing our glutes. We are hiking back out of the big room towards the elevator. If you're finding this video helpful or entertaining, or if you just wanna support us climbing through this cave, hit that like button, it really helps. what tour would be complete without exiting through the gift shop. Uh, they also have a restaurant up here as well. This is where the hot foods are, sides. You can refill your water bottle, get you a soda, a nice area to sit down. Of course, you can get stuff from the gift shop, shirts, cups, souvenirs. So we just finished hiking the entire route of Carlsbad Caverns. We started this journey about 11.30 this morning and we got done about 3 p.m. Now obviously we took our time, we took a lot of video and pictures, so you could really make this an all day event if you wanted to or you could try to go very quickly and probably get at least the first part of the hike done in about an hour. Some things to know if you're gonna come to Carlsbad Caverns. Wear good footwear. Some parts of the trails are very slippery. You need footwear that's gonna have some grips on the bottom in case you hit one of these wet patches on the trail and you don't slip. They do have guardrails, but some of the areas of the trail, are, they do have a little bit of an incline to them. So again, just be very careful. As far as the trek being strenuous, I didn't really find most of it to be very strenuous. For a lot of it, you are kind of going downhill, but then when you're trying to climb back out of the big room, there is some incline there, so you need to keep that in mind. If you have mobility issues, I would probably recommend that you take the elevator down, check out what you can of the big room, and that's probably gonna be the most that you're gonna be able to see, but don't get me wrong, there's a lot to see in the big room. Also keep in mind that although the big room is wheelchair and walker accessible, there are still a couple of portions of the big room trail that you cannot take a wheelchair, they won't fit. My other tip would just be very aware of your timing. We are here in February 2022 and currently the schedule 
stop selling tickets about 2.15 in the afternoon. That is the last time that you can enter into the cave. And they want to do this so that if it takes you a few hours to go through it, you'll be done by four or five when they're trying to close up. Currently, because of COVID, you do have to have a timed entry. You can do this very easily by going online. I'm gonna put the link down in the description below. You just go on there, reserve a time entry. They do give you an hour to come in. So like ours was from 1030 to 1130. Just arrive anytime in that hour and you'll get your tickets at the front desk and they'll let you down. Don't forget, we also have been getting into the national parks using our America the Beautiful Pass. This is the national park annual pass that you can get for $80. It is good for everybody in your car. It's not per person. So that can really save you a lot of money, especially if you're gonna hit up more than one national park in the year. Be mindful that it is an average of mid 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the cave year round. So even if it's 100 degrees outside in the New Mexico heat, it's probably still gonna be somewhere around 58, 59 degrees down in the cave. And if you're like me and you tend to get cold, I would probably wear something light, like a light jacket or maybe a sweatshirt because it does get pretty chilly down in there. We found that when we were moving at a pretty brisk pace, I stayed warm, I, it wasn't a problem. But then once we kind of stopped to maybe take a break or get some pictures, I noticed, Ooh, I'm getting kind of cold. Now today I just wore a light t-shirt and this chambray button-up shirt and that worked just fine. So those are my biggest tips for visiting Carlsbad Caverns. Let me know down in the comments if you have any other tips. I would also love to know if you've ever been here and what you thought of it. As I mentioned in the intro, this is the first video in a three-part series where we start off here at Carlsbad Caverns. Tomorrow we're going to go to White Sands National Park and check out Las Cruces and then on the third video we're going to attempt to climb Guadalupe Peak, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, give me some love down in the comments if you don't mind, and kind of bring my spirits up for that video. If you've made it this far, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to become part of the online travel family. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video. Bye!